Hey guys, my name is Sadie Rose. I'm one of the instructors at the downtown location at CKO. My background is in athletic training. And my name is Anita Joya Edwards. I'm also an instructor here downtown at CKO. And my background is in occupational therapy. I also have, as Sadie does too, we've laughed about this before. We have so many acronyms because we have so many different types of certif certifications. But um, I'm also certified as a sports and exercise nutrition um, coach. Um, with, again, several other um, certifications, but really more specifically what we want to talk about um, for this brief time is just that all or nothing mentality. Um, we have found ourselves in a position where we have, we're quarantined, we have two weeks of just a different type of lifestyle. And this can be a really great opportunity to do some self-reflecting and make some changes in life. Mm -hmm. But what often happens for some people is they get into this all or nothing mentality. Um, and so um, Sadie and I just wanted to chat briefly just to caution getting into that mindset. Yeah, I think this, specifically we started this conversation about how people's diet tends to switch or change dramatically when something like this happens where you might not be able to work out like you were for the next couple of weeks. And so you think you need to start shifting all of these other things in your life as well. And that's where we, we thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about um, how to draw awareness to some of that and also how to stay consistent with the things you're doing. And it's not necessarily about switching your diet up completely, but rather bringing mindfulness to your eating habits. Mm -hmm. So if, if you find that this is relatable, being an all or nothing person, and just to give you an example, quite often perfectionists tend to have that all or nothing mentality where they, um, we'll use the example of nutrition since it's what we were first ta talking about is perhaps maybe you um, were, have this goal of uh, omitting or eliminating sugar out of your diet. And so you go all in and you don't do any sugar um, well, this is so advantageous and it's great that you're aware that perhaps you eat a lot of sugar. The question would be, or the, the, I'm celebrating that you're aware of that, but the question would be, how can you take that idea or um, that habit that you ultimately want to change and reduce it to something that's simple, easy, and sustainable? When we go in an all or nothing mentality or an all or nothing position to change, we can potentially do that change, but the key here is sustainability. And so to really create a sustainable change that lasts and sticky mm -hmm. is to really wean it down to that simple, easy one thing. Um, I typically say with my clients that five minute activity, you can practice each day for a couple weeks and then build on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, going off of going off of that, I think there's something really powerful in the 80-20 rule. Um, it's a concept that's used in a variety of, of professions. For example, manufacturing, they use the 80-20 rule to identify productivity. Um, usually it's it's only 20% of an issue, 20% of something that's causing 80% of the issue. And so I think we can take this 80-20 rule and apply it um, to, to our eating habits, especially as we're adapting and having to change some of our already established habits to now we're home a lot more. Now we're, we're having to cook more at home or, or we're being forced to eat out. I mean, I don't know. Everyone's situation is a little bit different, but I think bringing a little bit more awareness to how you're eating can serve you really, really well um, with that. Absolutely. So we celebrate your enthusiasm to potentially want to use this as, as a time to create change. If, you know, if it is in your nutrition, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If it is in your fitness or um, movement lifestyle, that's awesome. We just encourage you to consider how you can scale back to do one simple thing that creates a habit and then you build that habit on top of that. Sadie mentioned 
I often sometimes with clients do 90 10, or 90%, 10%, because that ultimately we're looking for routine, repeated success. Mm -hmm. When we feel successful, we become more motivated mm -hmm. and we have a greater drive and consistency to keep going after that change. So hopefully you all are using this as an opportunity to perhaps just reflect and see, you know, what's going on in your lifestyle, whether it's nutrition or fitness, and maybe start considering um, if there is one that one thing that you can spend five minutes a day just to start slowly adjusting and changing. All right.